Continuing Horror Month, um, in the last video I put up, I think it was the last one I put up, I talked about the bingo card and I mentioned some possibles. Uh, one of the things on the bingo card is a doll horror. Oh, I don't have the card with me, it doesn't matter. And I showed this cover as a possible, When Darkness Loves Us. Uh, there's a doll on the cover, it's not a doll book, there's no dolls in the book. This is the best book I've read all year. Definitely the best book I've read since starting the channel. Um, the most intense, rich, uh, compelling, powerful reading experience. Uh, and the kind of thing you look for when you're reading and the kind of thing that always surprises you. It is two novellas, so uh, I was going to read these two and then something lighter right after them. <clears throat> or something uh, more traditional, something older. This is These are from the 80s. Uh, this is her first book, her first two books. Her first, her first book, which is two long stories. The, uh, there's two stories, When Darkness Loves Us, which is about the first third, so maybe 100 pages, I'm guessing. And then, which is excellent, and then a second novella, which is about two thirds of the book, called with the horrible title, the terrible title of "Beauty Is Dot Dot Dot." So it's a terrible title for anything. It's the only have a bad thing I have to say about the book, though. So Elizabeth Engstrom was a woman who started writing in you know, probably her thirties or forties or. Now let me see, let me think, because I know how old she would have been, 51, from, uh, mid-30s. She was uh, living in Hawaii. She had a successful copywriting business. She started writing. She joined a workshop with, this is from the Grady Hendrix introduction. Uh, she joined a uh, writing workshop that Theodore Sturgeon, the great science fiction writer, well-known science fiction writer, author of stuff you probably should know of, uh, like uh, More Than Human and Killdozer and tons of great uh, writer. Anyway, <coughs> took this class with him. He was wowed by her, her story, by When uh, when Darkness Loves It, uh, immediately got her an agent. Uh, she took off really well. Th this book went to auction. They wanted her to write a third uh a novella to bring out, you know, in the same collection to, you know, bulk up the word count. And she didn't have anything that she felt was good enough right then, so they just put it out with these two. Uh, then her career after that, she's still writing today. Her career after that uh, has, certainly has its ups and downs. And she is such a good writer. These stories... There's three of her books that Valancourt has out now. This is Valancourt Press, paperback, uh, Paperbacks from Hell, which I've talked about a lot and other channels have talked about, reaching a lot of books. This, For context, this came out about the same time as uh, Clive Barker hit the scene. Where did I even start? When Darkness Loves Us. It's a story about a young bride uh, who uh, gets trapped in a cave, in a cavern, and discovers she's pregnant. That's all I'm going to tell you about it. It's so surreal, and and it just, the thing about both these stories, uh, I don't want to talk about much about the plots. Uh, I'll talk a, a little more about the structure of Beauty Is. Uh, I think these, these are not the... Uh, these are not for everyone. They're for horror readers. Anybody who reads horror, anybody who likes horror uh, would like these, I think. They're pretty raw in their emotions and their intensity. And they go in places, both of these stories go in places that you just do not, ex or I did not expect them to go. It's like you're reading these stories going, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? What's going on? Very powerful writing. Beauty is is the story, and this is uh, by far the the greater story. When Darkness Loves Us is very cool. Sort of, um, who would I compare it to? I don't know. Um, 
a, a, a lot of writers of this time, I wouldn't call it splatterpunk, but <clears throat> because it's it's not just gore and mayhem and stuff. There's some there's some very visceral scenes. There's some, you know, slugs and things like that, and creatures and darkness and <clears throat> and uh, trauma. But not like slashers running around and knives. But so it's not really splatterpunk. But there is a kind of really audacious, kind of really emotional, powerful, deep, uh, visceral uh, writing that was done in horror at that time. Which I it might still be. I don't know. I don't read that much more. It seems seems like things are a little more staid in the publishing industry these days, particularly in mainstream publishing, legacy publishing, than this. This is very 80s in that sense. It's like there are no punches pulled in these stories. So uh, I think uh, people know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Anyway, Beauty Is is a story. It starts out It's about... It's, it starts out from the point of view of the main character who's a woman in her 40s, a special needs uh, woman who, who whose mother has just died and now she's on her own, she has to take care of herself. And, and both of these stories have like rural settings, uh, farm people, kind of Midwestern farms. In fact, uh, reading the first one, When Darkness Loves Us, I was for a while until you see that the main character is wearing jeans I really thought it took place in the 40s or something like that. You know, this this young woman in the first story is only 16 when she gets married. And, and you think, that's a strange choice. Are they Amish or something? And you know, they're just very, very rural people. And, and I guess based on the time that the story was written and the time the story takes... It must have been in the 60s that it's supposed to take place, that it's supposed to start when darkness loves us. Uh, it's hard to tell, though. There's, you know, That's one of those ambiguous stories where you don't know what's in the character's... Uh, what's reality and what's in the character's main head, and you're never really entirely sure, but there's definitely some of each at play, and it's up for the reader to decide how much of it is real and how much is not. Beauty is, like I said, it starts out this, this woman is... Uh, special needs middle-aged woman she's been gradually sort of trained by her mother to just barely take care of herself she knows how to bake bread and things like that and she goes into town and she takes money out of the bank and uh, is told in alternate uh, chapters between what is her name I should know that because I'm going to refer to her a lot uh, Martha her name is Martha in beauty is and so both of her parents die uh, in one year the story actually takes place right when her mother dies her father's already dead chapter two uh, goes back to the beginning before her birth when we meet the mother and father as new married a uh, new married couple coming to take over this farm that his parents had owned and um, so we follow these two tracks of Martha's life as alone and trying to uh, work herself out in the world and trying to get along and making it sound like some sort of like uh, you know sentimental and there's some sentimental value in the story it's definitely a horror story though uh, we find out some there's definitely a supernatural element at play uh, we, we follow the young marriage through their whole life, through the birth of Martha, through problems that are uh, uh, arise with that birth, uh, different... Um, I, I'll probably stop talking about it now. I hope I'm doing uh, a good enough job to to get you to read this book. If you like... Dark fiction. If you're interested in horror uh, mayhem at all, you got to read these books. The writing is fantastic. I just found out right before starting this video that I do have. I also own uh, Elizabeth Engstrom's second novel. Oh, but I don't have an internet connection for some reason. What? 
my internet's down. Okay, I can't show the cover of that one, but the next one that came out, uh, I also have, uh, like I said before, she's still publishing today. She's doing indie publishing now, apparently. I looked her up on Amazon, and she's got three books out from a couple different imprints and Valancourt Press. Uh, and then a bunch more books out that you can just tell kind of from, you know, the different size, uh, like the not quite uh, standard size cover JPEGs and the ridiculously low number of reviews and the very reasonable um, ebook price of about six ninety five each that these novels are mostly self-published now. It's great that she's still writing, still publishing. I just don't know what's going on in the world that a writer like this doesn't have the backing of a major publisher and that she isn't better known. But, you know, I'm as guilty as anyone because I had never heard of her anyway. But she does have this, you know, these... these um, these reissues so I'm, I'm she's getting she's getting her due and I'm glad she's still around I believe she's about 70 I'm glad she's still around to enjoy that and instead of so many well the other one's called black black ambrosia that I believe is her second novel so I'm going to read that next um, this other than I didn't do a tag of uh, I didn't do that first month quarter tag uh, because by the time I learned about it, Black, Black Ambrosia, that's her other book from Paperbacks from Hell. And she also has a, a story collection. Is that, it looks like it's out of focus to me. <clears throat> also, she has a story collection from Valancourt from their regular literary imprint, not their Paperbacks from Hell imp imprint. So those are her three novels from Valancourt. Everything else appears to be self-published which on one hand is great because it's all available i'm gonna i want to read everything she's ever written looks like later she moved from horror more into like uh, some more uh, straight thrillers she also has a book on how to write sex scenes for writers which um which probably be useful if you want to write sex scenes there's really not any sex there's there's sexual content in these books there's people who have there's yeah, I guess there is some sex scenes in this book. Um, you know, by modern standards, definitely there's sex scenes in this book. Meaning, things today are pretty are pretty prudish. Uh, there's definitely characters with sexual feelings. There's complexity. One great thing about Beauty is, like every time I read that title, I think, God, what a terrible title! Thank God it was in another book with a with a better title because Beauty. Uh, does that even mean that how beauty is dot 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 and it's really not even that related to the story it's a very weak title so i'm just keep mentioning it to make sure that everybody knows that i'm, I'm uh, uh, unbiased about how great this book is because there is one thing i didn't like about it stupid title but what was i talking about about her um what are we at 13 minutes something like that um, her, I don't remember something, something about the main characters. Um, oh, I know what it is. Okay. So when these two parallels of the story, the, the current day, uh, life of the woman alone after her parents have passed away and the backstory of, of leading up to that. To that point which leads all the way up through the lives of the parents and they finally come together at the end and we find out all the mysteries are revealed of what's going on it's it's brilliantly handled i think i can't really tell for sure from the from the introduction but i think this was the first thing she wrote and then that and then the shorter story in the beginning which caused theodore sturgeon ted sturgeon to discover her was actually the second thing she wrote. Um, but there are things in there that seem... There are events in this story, in the second story, I'm talking about beauty is about the special needs woman, seem kind of hard to 
and I'm not talking about the supernatural stuff, of course, but seemed kind of hard to reconcile. And But as the story goes on, she does such a great job of explaining this all and shows it all to you and the different uh, characters in the town, and it all makes sense by the end. It's all sort of perfectly played out. Uh, it's just a masterful piece of writing. Um, I don't know, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I was planning to read uh, something. I had something picked out, uh, kind of an old pulp novel that I was going to read next, and I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't read anything after this because I just had to sit there and um, bask in it because it's so powerful of a story. The first one, I thought, that's pretty intense. I need to take a little break. And then I started the second one, which in retrospect, I probably would have done it on a different day because I was up pretty late reading it. And I just... I had a whole list of stuff I wanted to read and blow through. So it's... I didn't do any more reading that day or the next day because I was still thinking about it. And that's what you look for, right? So that's the kind of book that's like a whole different level. Other than, you know, looking back at the year, I the, other, the book, and it was before I started the channel, but the book I most enjoyed other than this... It's probably The Cocktail Waitress by James M. Cain. And I don't want to go way off on that because I was thinking about doing a video on it, but it's been so long since I read it now. It was back in January before I started the channel. That James M. Cain wrote uh, The Postman Always Rings Twice and a lot of other stories. Uh, he kind of fell off late in his career. I read a book, a late book by him once called The Institute, which is horrible. So Hard Case Crime put out The Cocktail Waitress, and which I ignored when it came out because I figured out oh, it's just, you know, because it, it was uh, uh, an unpublished novel. And I thought, well, it's probably just like his other later ones, no good, but, but it was terrific. So it was great to see in that one as a writer, I uh, loved his early stuff so much and to read a new novel new to me by him was fantastic. And, uh, you know, one of the most uh, exciting things you can have as a reader of fiction. And the other most exciting thing is just to find a writer like Elizabeth Engstrom, who's been around forever. And to know that um, she has a ton more books in print. And I can't wait to get through my 100 book challenge so I can buy all of them and read them. But, um, like I said, she does have one more Black Ambrosia. So I'll be reading that at some point during this month because that's also a horror novel. And I'll leave it there.